Okay, so movies at the moment are in a bit of a weird place. Franchises are hitting points now where we've had a number of different actors playing certain roles that people have fond memories of from their childhood. You also have technology hitting a point where it's possible to create lifelike looking CGI people and this has been done to great effect in things like the book of Boba Fett. However, with this comes the temptation that we can now resurrect the dead and use them in films to score cameo points by banking off the back of nostalgia. Now, I get why studios have decided to do it, and a lot of the time it acts as a touching tribute to those we've lost since we fell in love with the franchise. I know you probably think this video is going to be me just patronizingly condemning them for doing it, but I actually think I can totally understand why they've done it, and a lot of the times I don't think there's a nefarious side to it. A lot of the creatives probably think it's a good way to show an actor lives on in our hearts through them reprising certain roles, and it doesn't seem that sinister. However, I also now feel it's gotten to the point where Hollywood spent so much effort on asking whether they could do it that they haven't stopped to think whether they should. Throughout this video, I want to go through my personal thoughts on bringing back dead actors and why I think that in the end, Hollywood should stop doing it. This includes the times where I think it's worked and also the times where I think it hasn't. Overall though, I believe we're getting to a point now where it's too risky to even attempt this stuff and you should just avoid doing it because it's rare it actually works well. This video will contain spoilers for The Flash as well, so if you haven't seen that and don't want to know, then go watch it, come back and let me know what you think. Now though the term deepfaking is a pretty new concept, the idea of editing dead actors into movies is something that's existed for a long time. There's loads of really notable instances where this has happened, but the first major version that springs to mind is Bruce Lee's Game of Death. Lee passed away while only half of the movie was complete, and thus the crew had to come up with their own way to finish the film. CGI obviously wasn't available at the time, and thus they had to employ body doubles and also edit things in using existing footage. This allowed them to complete the movie, however this early film also cements some of the more sinister things that could happen when you're trying to bring an actor back to life. In the film, we get a funeral scene involving Lee's character and they actually used shots of the dead actor from his open casket ceremony. YouTube is being a bit funny with monetization at the moment and I don't want to show a body like this on screen because you know what happened with Logan Paul, but if you watch the movie, his actual corpse is there. Now in the context of the film, it's used when the character fakes his death, however, filming his open casket for a moment like this, it's not exactly something I can do. Now that also kind of exemplifies some of my issues with what we'll get into and it becomes more about making the movie than it does about respecting the actor. One of the best things I think Marvel did with Wakanda Forever is that they didn't tell out a CGI Chadwick Boseman to die at some point in the movie. Though people don't like the funeral aspect of the film, I think it works well as a tribute and we of course have the Marvel Studios logo being changed to a homage of him. That to me still works well in giving the fans the feeling they're saying goodbye without trying to resurrect the dead for a couple of minutes of footage. Now the whole thing with Bruce Lee is something that studios have employed when an actor dies mid-production. His son Brandon Lee sadly died during his work on The Crow when they had to rewrite and use doubles in order to complete the work. Oliver Reed had to have certain scenes edited differently in Gladiator and they reused certain shots and lines to make it seem he was still alive. I think things like this are okay as the actor signed on and likely wanted to finish the film if they couldn't be there to do it. As technology has improved though, the advancements and ways that they've handled things have also changed as well. I think Paul Walker's passing exemplifies this and the actor sadly died during the filming of Furious 7. His brothers were brought on to film the body double shots and they digitally replaced his face at the end for that final ride off into the sunset. This scene to me is extremely touching and it acts as a great tribute to the deceased actor. Now this is where I think things work well as Paul obviously wanted to be part of the movie but he unfortunately couldn't film it. Where things start to get murky for me though is when actors are brought back that haven't given their consent. Now in the case of Ghostbusters Afterlife, Harold Ramis was recreated through using CGI to play Egon come the final act of the film. Why I think this works okay on a moral level is that Ramis was trying to get the movie off the ground for a number of years but he sadly passed away before it rolled into production. The film itself also acts as a tribute to him with several of the characters, locations and so on all being linked directly to Egon. You also have the rifts between the cast and this sadly caused them to not be on speaking terms for a number of years. Bill Murray and Harold had a big falling out which was highly reported on though they did patch things up before his passing. This is sort of all the characters finally saying their goodbye to not only Egon but Harold as well and we're very much getting some meta commentary from the actors who apologize for not reaching out. Now where I think things start to get a bit murkier is in stuff like Rogue One where they bring back Tarkin. 
They already toyed around with this in Revenge of the Sith by showing a younger version of him, but this was played by a different actor, so no harm, no foul. Personally, I think recasts like this are fine, as you can't expect people to stay in the role forever. Where we hit the shades of grey though, is when he's brought back as a character in the movie. Now, the main thing with this that doesn't appear in the other things we'll talk about later on, is that Tarkin actually has a character. He does and says things that massively impact the plot, and doesn't feel like they've just thrown him in there to silently stand around. There's an actor playing him, and the creative team clearly put a lot of effort into making sure the effects were as good as they could be, and that they were bringing him back in the best way that they could. I know people kick off at Leia at the end of the movie, but this was made before Carrie Fisher's passing, and I'd consider that more of a deepfake, de-aging sort of thing. She was brought back using archival footage for Rise of Skywalker, but she's integral to the plot in that, and obviously was hoping to be around when they made that movie. Anyway, that's where things start to really bend a lot, and hey, if you're mad at talking coming back, then I can totally understand. Now at the opposite end of this is what we get in The Flash, and this is where I've hit a point where I wish Hollywood would stop doing it. In the film, there's a big scene that brings back a number of dead actors, including George Reeves, Christopher Reeve, and Adam West. None of these characters say anything, they don't affect the plot at all, and instead they're just propped up like puppets so we can point at the screen and applaud. The CGI has also been really mishandled when it comes to this, and they don't look like there's been that much effort put into them. I know the term PlayStation 3 graphics it's thrown around, but they, they just look dead-eyed and not like real people. I know director Andy Muschietti has also come out and said these bad effects were intentional, but I think they should have chosen someone else or just scrapped them entirely. They have no bearing on the plot, and it's not like the studio's hands were tied with this, similar to something like Rise of Skywalker. They really didn't need to be included in the film, and instead it feels like they were just put in so they could trick us into feeling nostalgic about it. Had they helped stop the worlds crashing into each other, I might be a little less frustrated with it, but they don't do anything beyond just standing around. Now if you know the history of some of the people here as well, then you know why this might be seen as being in bad taste. George Reeve ended up sinking into a depression about how much Superman ruined his career, and the actor apparently took his own life after failing to find other roles. There are conspiracies about whether that's the case or not, but the mental anguish he felt is at least very well documented. There's also the fact that these guys didn't give their consent or have any involvement at all with this film. In the case of Carrie Fisher, she of course filmed things for The Force Awakens and Last Jedi that could then be reworked for Rise so the character could get a send-off. Yeah though, there's no way when George Reeves signed on that he could have imagined the DCEU or even thought of a way his likeness could have been used in the future. Sure estates can sign things off, but ask yourself, yeah, if you had a great great nephew that agreed to let you be put in a movie after you died, do you think they'd be doing it because, you know, they, they have a strong personal connection to you or because there's also some financial incentive? I'm sure there's aspects of the first part, but yeah, the people signing off on this stuff might not have everyone's best interests at heart. George Reeve didn't have any children either, so there are questions over how this cameo came about. Now, I think the fact that they don't really do anything also cheapens the tribute overall. They're getting called cameos, but when you think about it, they're not really cameos. For example, I, I could quite easily use today's technology to make an AI recreation of William Shakespeare that I then take and put into a video. Shakespeare never gave his consent, it's not really him, I just have him flashing on screen for a second and he has absolutely had no involvement at all. What I'm doing is I'm just showing a CGI version of him which by the same rules means that he's cameo in my video. He hasn't, but you get the idea and can hopefully now understand why that's the same case with the movie. I think when you have so many actors attached to tragedy that appear like this and mean absolutely nothing to the plot, that's when things get bad and also the effects in general don't look good either. Instead of being wowed, I'm sat thinking how atrocious it looks, which makes me feel like it's a bit of a bad tribute when all things are considered. Feels like when they unveil a bad statue of someone, and instead of being something you marvel at, it just looks so bad and has the complete opposite effect. Now like I said, I'm not trying to get too preachy on this stuff, I apologise if I've come across that way, as I can actually see why they've started to do it more and more and more. However, I think the risks outweigh the benefits of doing it, and in the end, there's a lot that can go wrong. Brandon Routh canonically is the same version as Christopher Reeve, and I don't think there would have been any of the backlash if he'd been in the role instead. What we have though is leaked frames and footage blowing up on Twitter, and now people writing 10 minute long video essays asking them to stop doing it. 
thinking that Hollywood should just let the dead lie and probably put an end to this before it gets out of control. It almost feels like the corporations now only act as even in death and that they'll just keep wheeling them out for eternity without ever letting them rest. Kinda sounds like the plot of a Black Mirror episode and if you've seen Jonah's Awful then you'll know it touches on a similar thing. I was actually watching that thinking they might have released it on the same day as The Flash on purpose cause they even do a joke about George Clooney in it at one point. Either way though, what I'm asking Hollywood is that you please think about it the next time you try. My guess is that you'll realise you often don't need to do this and that you're only doing it for nostalgic reasons. I think when you're in a position of thinking, should I do this, should I not, the fact you're questioning it probably shows that you, you're unsure yourself and it's best to just play it safe. Don't do it and you'll get none of these negative feelings towards your film and instead people can enjoy it for its plot, story and performances. Obviously, I know this is going to be a touchy subject, so if you agree or not, then the comment section's below. Hopefully, I've argued my points across to where you can at least see why I'm talking about this, and I'd of course also love to hear your perspective too. We'll leave some other videos on screen right now if you want to watch them, and hopefully i see you over there right after this. Without the way, I've been your host Paul, hopefully this has given you something to think about, and hopefully I'll see you on the next video. You take care of yourself, peace.